In today's lab, we're going to look at blood. In this lecture, we're going to use the Alte blood model. Okay, as you can see, there are a lot of these red circles that are kind of pushed in in the center. And actually, if we looked at this three-dimensionally, we would see that it's pushed in on both sides, and we would say that this is a biconcave disc. Now, as you can see, it's red in color, and that would make this a red blood cell. We abbreviate it as RBC, but since this is anatomy, I'd like you to know that they are called erythrocytes. Erythrocytes. Okay, so that's our red blood cells. The rest of these cells, except for these little dots, we'll get to those later, are called white blood cells or leukocytes. And of course, white blood cells, a lot of times you'll see that abbreviated as WBCs. Okay, but they are leukocytes. Now the most common leukocyte is going to be this one right here with the number four on it. Okay, and those are neutrophils. Now, neutrophils are going to have multi-lobed nuclei, and as they get older, they're going to have more and more lobes. Now, when they first appear, they are not going to be quite as, as um, segmented, and so we would call this a band cell, a band cell. Now, if you're looking at a CBC, a complete blood count, it'll be listed as a band cell. And again, as it gets more and more lobed, these are going to have more segments. And so on a CBC, they're often uh, referred to as SEGs. So bands for young neutrophils, SEGs for older neutrophils. So why is that important? Well, the reason is, is because if we have a lot of bands, these are the new neutrophils then we probably have a, a new infection going on, okay? And by the way, these come about because of bacterial infections. And so, again, if we have a lot of these bands, it's probably a new infection. So, with that said, if we have a lot of these SEGs, then what do we have? Well, these are older neutrophils, right? So they've been around a long time. And if we have a lot more of these, then it's probably more of a chronic infection. Okay, so that's something you want to think of clinically. So again, these are neutrophils. Okay, and for an exam, that's probably all you need to know. Okay, again, neutrophils, at least for my class. Your class may differ. The next one is going to be lymphocytes. And so right here, these uh, have a number two on them, I believe. Yes, they do. A little hard to see. But these are uh, the lymphocytes. Lymphocytes are more prevalent with uh, viral infections. Okay. And uh, under the microscope, you're going to see a nucleus and just a little hint of lavender, a little hint of the cytoplasm. Okay. Now this one right here is also, and it's, let's see, number eight. It's also a lymphocyte, but this is an activated lymphocyte. So some of the lymphocytes are going to create antibodies. And so this one, this activated lymphocyte, is full of antibodies, and it's ready to release those antibodies. Okay. I probably won't ask this on an exam, uh, but this and this I will ask, and those are going to be lymphocytes. Okay. And next we have monocytes. Monocytes are listed here under number three. Okay. So again, these are monocytes. You're going to find these more often in a viral infection. Okay, so again, these are monocytes. And then over here, we have eosinophils. Under the microscope, this is going to look more orangey, the way it stains. 
with little red dots. Okay, so this is what we would call a granulocyte because of the granules that you would see under the microscope. And these are going to be increased in your blood if you have a parasitic infection. So a parasite in its larval form, you'll see a lot of these. You'll also see these when you have allergies. Okay, so these can be up in allergies. All right. And then our next one is our basophil. Now this is the least uh, amount of uh, white blood cells that you're going to find under normal conditions in someone's blood. If these are elevated, and these, this is a granulocyte, as you can see, there's lots of granules. Those granules are heparin and histamine. And think about that. If you take an antihistamine, you do that because you have, what, an allergy. And if you have an allergy, what do your eyes do? They run. What does your nose do? It runs. Okay, and you might get all puffy. Okay, that's because of histamine being released in your system. And the histamine causes vasodilation, which means your blood vessels get larger. So you're going to look more red. You're going to be itchy. Um, it's going to make you leaky. So you get kind of puffy. Uh, because, again, those capillaries are leaky, so fluid is going to leak out. And um, you're going to have a little bit of swelling uh, going on, as well as um, eyes running, nose running, etc. Okay, so right here, that is because of the basophil. And again, that's going to be a granulocyte because of the little tiny granules. And then we have these little fragments here. And these are called platelets or thrombocytes. And that's what these are. Okay. And these are actually fragments of a cell called a megakaryocyte. And that megakaryocyte remains in the bone marrow, but as it fragments, then it's going to leave the bone marrow and go into your circulation and help with blood clotting. Okay, so again, thrombocytes or platelets. And all this yellow that you see in the background just represents plasma. Okay, so I hope this helps.